Hello, I hope all is well. So today's video, and something I've been thinking about for quite some time, is dead content in old school RuneScape and ways to possibly improve some of it. Now by this I'm talking about mini games or other activities that are very, very underused. And the first one that I've come up with is Trouble Brewing. Now I had never done Trouble Brewing until I had to do it for one of the diaries. And when I got there, it actually took me a long time, even in the world designated for it, to find another player to join the game to even be able to play. So that tells me that very, very few people actively play this game. And I understand why, as the rewards are really underwhelming. Now, in order to participate in this minigame, you do need to have completed Cabin Fever Quest. Trouble Brewing is very easy to get to, as it does have a minigame teleport that will take you directly there. The way you play this game is you're basically going around collecting items on this little island trying to make rum. And it's pretty enjoyable to play actually. However, it is very slow when you're playing by yourself with no teammates as you will not end up making very many rums in the 20 minute round and therefore you won't get very much uh, as a reward. The reward for this minigame is a currency called Pieces of Eight which can be traded for parts of an outfit which I'm not sure if very many people have it or if they have it and they just keep it in their bank. I don't really ever see anyone wear it. But what I find interesting is another thing you can get as a reward is called The Stuff. And what you do with The Stuff is you use it while brewing your own ales. And it basically doubles the chance of getting a mature ale as opposed to a regular one. An easy way to make this minigame more popular would be to make mature ales more popular. Currently, Chef's Delight Mature is the only ale that is the best boost available for its particular skill. Back in the old days in RuneScape, Greenman's Ale Mature used to be quite valuable, but now there's no point because there is a better Herblore boost. Same with uh, Axeman's Folly Mature. Uh, you don't need to do that anymore because you can just use the Dragon Axe Special, which is plus three instead of plus two. The same goes for Dwarven Stout Mature. You can use the Dragon Pickaxe special for plus three as opposed to plus two for Dwarven Stout Mature. I think simply increasing the boost of the regular ales from one to two and from the mature ales from two to four would bring brewing back as an activity and therefore would create a lot of demand for the stuff if it would improve your chances of getting the mature ales which would definitely sell for a lot more than they do now. On top of that, runecrafting doesn't currently really have a boost other than, of course, spicy stews. But if you had a runecrafting ale, added that to the game, I feel like a lot of people would be interested in trying to get that, or at least enough people would that there would be some demand and perhaps more people would do trouble brewing for the stuff. I don't think a plus four boost is overpowered given that a lot of skills already have that, but I do think the ales would be quite pricey and would therefore bring back some demand for brewing. All right, next on my list of dead content, and this one is really dead as well, is the Brimhaven Agility Dungeon. Now, I've always been quite fond of this because when I was a new member back in, oh, 2005, 2006, this was where I trained agility. Of course, there were no rooftop courses back then, and I really didn't know much, but uh, I, I've always enjoyed this as a mini game. So the way this minigame currently works is you have to navigate these obstacles in order to tag the pillars with the yellow flashing arrow before it moves in order to keep your streak going and keep earning tickets. You then trade the tickets at the end in exchange for rewards, usually agility experience. So the change I would like to see made is instead of trying to earn, say, 100 tickets and then trade them in for 31k agility experience as a reward, I would like you to earn that 31k experience while you're doing the agility here. So keeping the uh, experience rate the same, but then at the end, instead of trading those tickets in for rewards of experience, you can trade them in for other rewards. Either tradables that are worth maybe around three to 400k per hour at level 70 agility. So not something that's gonna be overpowered, but at least something that would make you consider this as a training method. This wouldn't compete with rooftop courses at all as far as experience rates, but being able to make a couple hundred K an hour in tradables would maybe make this more interesting to some players. Another thought as a potential reward would be weight reducing jewelry. So like a necklace and a 
a ring, maybe each would only reduce by one kilogram, but still it would go along with your graceful set and perhaps would make people want to do that in order to gain an extra one or two kilograms of weight reduction. Up next is not my favorite one on this list, but it's still pretty interesting, and that is the Rogue's Den. Now, the reward from this is the Rogue Outfit, which will give you a chance of double loot for pickpocketing, or if you have the full set, will guarantee you double loot. Now, I'll be completely honest, I do not know how popular the Rogue Outfit is. I very seldom, if ever, see players wearing it. I think I personally have one or two pieces, but that's not to say that it's not popular and people uh, do wear it. But even if that is the case, once you've done this mini game and received the whole outfit, there's not really a point in doing it any further as the experience reward is terrible. My idea for an improvement that would get people to come back here once they've already obtained the entire rogue outfit would be to add another feature to the outfit. So while it already gives you a chance of receiving double loot from pickpocketing, my addition would be giving it a chance to allow you to pickpocket the the uh, NPC even if you would have been caught. But in order to do this, it requires charges. So similar to like Barrow's armor that degrades over time, these charges would deplete and the only way to recharge it would be with an item that you can get as a potential reward here. And I think also if you did something like that, you could make that item tradable. That way if somebody just wants to use the benefit of it they can buy them and if there's a market for it then some people would be able to make money doing that now I wouldn't say this would be something that would give you a hundred percent chance of not getting thought or not getting caught while pickpocketing I think that would be overpowered but if you could increase the chance of success maybe in each time that you get the benefit from it if basically you successfully pickpocket the NPC when you should have been caught and you lose a charge and maybe a charge costs I don't know a thousand coins each or so something like that I think that there would be a market for that and that it would be beneficial to this mini game and would perhaps bring people back to it alright up next is the sorceress garden and this is available to you after completing Prince Ali rescue and the purpose of this mini game is to navigate through these mazes without being spotted by these uh, little guards here and you have to make it to the end where you either receive a squirk fruit or two herbs it's your choice which one you go pick but once you pick either the fruit or the herbs you'll be teleported back out and you'll have to go back through the maze again if you want another reward you then grind the squirk fruit into a juice using a pestle and mortar with a beer glass in your inventory and you can give the juices to Osman in exchange for thieving experience. Now the winter ones which require level 1 thieving take 5 fruits for 350 experience so really not worth it there. At level 25 you can do the spring garden. It takes 4 fruits and you get 1350 experience. At level 45 thieving you can use autumn which takes three fruits for 2,350 experience and at level 65 you can do summer which only takes two fruits in exchange for 3,000 thieving experience. I think this mini game could be kind of successful being made into something like the gnome kitchen where you go to Osman and he'll say oh I want two winter squirt juices one autumn and one spring and then you have to go navigate each of those mazes and bring him back the different juices in exchange for some thieving experience and perhaps the chance of another reward in addition to that. I could see this being kind of balanced if a player could gain anywhere from half to maybe two-thirds of the experience that they could gain from pyramid plunder at whatever level along with maybe a couple hundred coins worth of rewards as well. Alright number five is the ranging guild. Now I see pretty much no reason to come here other than getting your 99 range cape when you earn it. But there is one thing that's kind of interesting and that is this target shooting mini game. It's interesting because you gain range experience without getting hit points experience. So it's nowhere near as fast as cannoning but it is much cheaper as you pay 200 coins for 10 bronze arrows. And the way it works is you just shoot them at this target and let's say you end up getting 800 points well that'll earn you half that much in experience so 400 experience and then one tenth that much in archery guild tickets 
so you'll gain 80 tickets. Archery tickets are only worth 5 GP each, and the reason is because the rewards are terrible. I think that if you simply rework the shop and the reward structure and added better things in, like runite limbs, maybe a rune crossbow, rune bolts, just anything other than like a coif and adamant javelins. I mean, this stuff is way, way outdated. If you could get the price of archery tickets up to like 25 or 30 GP each, this might be a decent way for lower level players to train and also make some money. I think you could do this without messing up any balance. Rune bolts are currently around 200 GP each, and let's say you put 100 of them in there for 1,000 archery tickets. Well, that would bump the price of an archery ticket up close to 20 GP each, as the sale price of the rune bolts would kind of set the archery ticket price. All right, that's pretty much going to do it. I was just going to put those five in there, but I kind of felt like I had to throw Gnome Ball in there just because I really like Gnome Ball. I think it's kind of fun, but it'd be a lot better if they had, like, PvP Gnome Ball. Like, if they had a longer pitch and you could have, you know, the Gnomes in there too, but maybe two-on-two -two human, and you could tackle each other and try to score goals and try to prevent the other team from scoring goals. Maybe that could even work if you made it like Castle Wars where... You know, you played a game to five or whatever, and then the winning team would get two tickets and the losing team got one, and then maybe there were some cosmetics as a reward, some goofy gnome outfit. That'd be kind of cool. I would actually do that. All right, thanks for watching. Hope you found this video interesting, and I'll see you next time.